Today, on Holy Saturday, we come to the seventh of the Sorrows of Mary and the last of this year's Lenten re Reflections. As we ponder the mystery of Jesus' burial in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, we are standing here by our monastery statue of Our Lady of Sorrows, which captures the moment after the tomb has been sealed shut. Mary stands alone. She cradles the crown of thorns in her hands. Her countenance shows forth an aura of deep prayer in the midst of an ocean of sorrow. She seems to summon us into a space of silence and pondering, a space of mystery. Yesterday, at the end of Good Friday, our community of Passionist nuns gathered here, as we do every year, to pray night prayer and to spend 30 minutes of silent prayer in her company. At the end of that long day of loving endurance with Jesus and his passion, we join Mary in her grief and her exhaustion, here, outside his sealed tomb. The storm of violence and pain has ceased its wrecking ball upon our beloved Lord and upon our hearts, and we gather close to our mother to learn from her the meaning of what has happened the meaning of what is yet to come. The silence we enter into with Our Lady of Sorrows at the end of Good Friday and extending all the way through Holy Saturday until the Great Easter Vigil is unlike any other moment of the year. We depart from the tomb, yes, but in a very real sense, our hearts, like Mary's, remain with Jesus there. In the darkness, in the silence, we enter into the great Sabbath rest of the Lord. Holy Saturday is a time of silence, of waiting, of pondering. It is the day of the buried seed, which dies in order to bring forth fruit. It is the day of the promise yet to be fulfilled. It is the day of hope. On Holy Saturday, Jesus rests in the tomb. Our hearts are torn, raw, empty as the tabernacle that stands yawning and waiting to receive him once again. And it is Mary, our sorrowful mother, who teaches us to wait in hope. On that first Holy Saturday, Mary held on to his promise. The son, must, the son of Man must suffer greatly, and be killed, and rise after three days. She teaches our hearts to begin beating again in that ever-growing crescendo of loving expectation. Tonight we will sing of his triumph. Tonight we will see him again. Today we wait. We keep vigil. We hope in that whispered promise, he will rise. What is hope? What do we encounter in Our Lady of Sorrows, in each of these seven swords, but especially today, outside the sealed tomb? True Christian hope is no wish, is no dream. It's something rock solid. A certainty in the promises of the Lord, who is infinitely loving and infinitely trustworthy. Hope is the confidence that spurs us to prepare the Easter lilies and the Easter feasts today, in the midst of our great morning. The hope we encounter in Our Lady of Sorrows is one that knows that eternal happiness, perfect fulfillment, everlasting life, are just on the other side of these sorrows. It shows itself in the peace, the joy, the perseverance with which she accompanies Jesus in his great work of redemption, from the first moment of the Annunciation all the way through the sealed tomb, and with which she consents to each share she has in his cross. Her hope and ours knows that out of this sealed tomb, he will rise, 
and so will we. Our hope looks toward the heavenly Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth that begin tonight, where God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. For he says to each of us this day, Behold, I am making all things new.